You're watching Euronews Now. I'm Mariam Zadi and these are our headlines this hour. At least 50 killed as a missile hits a train station packed with evacuees fleeing the offensive in the east of Ukraine. Russia denies the attack. Ukraine belongs in Europe. EU Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen symbolically hands President Zelensky an envelope in Kyiv that could kickstart Ukraine's membership to the bloc. Here in the Cube, we take a closer look at how Russian state media are continuing to spin false narratives about the Ukraine war. And the EU continues to hit Russia hard with a raft of new measures. Assets totaling 32 billion euros are frozen. It includes bank accounts, boats and real estate. Good evening. At least 50 people have died, including children, after a missile struck a train station in Ukraine's southeastern city, Kramatorsk. Reports say thousands of people were waiting evacuation trains at the time of the strike, which injured at least 400. Cleanup operations are underway to remove the dead bodies and debris. Ukraine's prosecutor general said the attack was a crime against humanity. It remains unclear whether the train station was the intended target of the airstrike. In a video addressed to MPs in Finland, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky accused Moscow of committing yet another war crime. Well, as Russia appears to ramp up its eastern offensive, our correspondent Sasha Bakulina explained the strategic importance of Kramatorsk for Ukrainian troops and civilians. What we know is that according to the mayor of Kramatorsk, there were around 4,000 people at the station there waiting for the evacuation. Uh, when this happened, Kramatorsk is uh, well known as a hub nowadays. Now this is a hub. This is a point from where people are taking trains to evacuate from the eastern Ukraine. Now Russia said many times that they will refocus on the east of Ukraine, on Donbas region. These are the regions of Donetsk and Luhansk. We've seen their forces also withdrawing from the north of Ukraine to be relocated there. And uh, look, Kramatorsk as well is uh, under Ukrainian control now. But of course, in the region, there are lots of Russian forces. Also, Kramatorsk is one of those, this, this uh, city, it's around 20 kilometers away from Slovyansk. And Slovyansk is believed to be now the main focus of Russian forces because only through Slovians they would be able to encircle Ukrainian forces in the region. All right, and so, you know, about this attack, Russia denies it, but was this rocket theirs? What do we know about that? Well, that's, that's the question, right? So what we know about the missile, what we know now that this is the Tochka-U missile type. Now, this is a Soviet missile type, so which means that the, they can be used by many countries that were linked and they were in the Soviet Union as the members of the of the Soviet Union. As well, according to the Donetsk governor, he said that Russian military already used Tochkayu to detonate cluster munitions in the attacks on Kramatorsk some days ago. I went to look for other, other sources and other information on that. And in February, late February, when Russia and Belarus had those military drills, a uh, few media outlets linked to the state of Russia and to Belarus, that's Belta and Vesti. They both reported about those drills that Tochkayu was used during those drills. And to quote them, I will translate from Russian to English. For the first time, special attention is paid to the borders with Ukraine. In one of the southmost points of the country, Tochkayu covered them. This is Vesti of the 20th of February, four days before Russia invaded Ukraine. Well, Ukraine's president, Vladimir Zelensky, blamed Russia for the Kramatorsk train station attack. Moscow rejects the claim. Our correspondent, Glina Polinskaya, told us that Kremlin officials are now accusing Ukraine of attacking its own civilians. Take a look. Kremlin's reaction was quite predictable. It uh, denied uh, the responsibility for the rocket strike on the rail station in Kramatorsk and blamed Ukraine. Uh, President Putin's spokesman Dmitry Peskov this morning quoted uh, Russia's defense ministry saying that uh, the Tochka U uh, missiles are only used by Ukraine and as Sasha has just mentioned before we uh, did see in indeed those reports uh, in the Russian state media before uh, the 24th of February which uh, actually say the contrary but however Russia stands at this position and the foreign minister of Russia this evening issued a statement which says that Ukraine targets civilians to um, 
discredit Russia's military and uh, the statement urged to stop providing uh, Ukraine with weapons and earlier Russia's foreign ministry also said that NATO was a part of this conflict fighting for Ukraine with the hands of Kiev. Okay, so Galina, moving away from this rocket attack then, um, what's been the Russian react reaction to the latest EU sanctions and is there a chance they will retaliate? Well, it seems that there are some plans, uh, some retaliation plans, and Russia says that it will win this economic war and uh, the Kremlin said that it will find other markets for Russia's coal, but in any case, it's not a big deal. It does not represent much of Russia's budget if you compare it with the oil and gas, and most of it is not, it's not, um, it's not produced by the state, but uh, by the private companies and uh, deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council, ex-president of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev, called the sanctions an illegal uh, act of international aggression against Russia and said that it will only consolidate Russia's people and strengthen Russia's political regime. And so uh, the one of the retaliation measures um, that Russia is thinking is to um, is to nationalize the property of the so-called uh, unfriendly states and their citizens. There is a project of a law in the Russian State Duma and they will most probably uh, be voting on it in the nearest future. The President of the European Commission promised a billion euros in financial support to Ukraine alongside the extra weapons being given by member countries. In her first visit to the country since the outbreak of the war, Ursula von der Leyen said the brave soldiers of Ukraine have been fighting for everyone. She predicted that while Russia would be ruined by its war, Ukraine would emerge from the conflict wealthier and stronger. There was also a significant and symbolic gesture for President Zelensky. The question here that is in here is the basis for our discussion in the coming weeks. It is where your path towards Europe and the European Union begins. It will be not as usual a matter of years to form this opinion, but I think a matter of weeks if we work closely together. So for you, dear Volodymyr, Thank you so much. I want to give you that. Thank you so much. This is the question, yeah. And earlier I spoke to our correspondent Sergio Ferreira de Almeida, who is in Kyiv. I began by asking him what potential EU membership would mean for the people of Ukraine. Take a look. Ursula von der Leyen, when she presented the, that uh, uh, reconstruction fund, fund uh, promised to Vlad uh, Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, that all the member states will participate. Uh, she promised that uh, all the member states are willing to uh, help Ukraine to rebuild uh, the country after the war. And she also said uh, that this is a, the, one of the biggest challenge for Europe uh, after the Second World War. And as Ukraine, uh, for, uh, 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 Ukraine is part of Europe and Ukraine belongs to Europe, as Ursula von der Leyen said, uh, all the member states, all the Europeans are going to help uh, Ukraine to rebuild uh, and to uh, step forward uh, to the next phase after the war. Now, Sergio, you also touched upon what I'm going to ask you about now. So Ukraine, of course, has long been talking and calling for um, EU membership. And we saw von der Leyen symbolically handing um, this envelope to President Zelensky that contains the path to potential EU membership. So what more can you tell us about that? That was a, a really symbolic moment when uh, Ursula von der Leyen gave the envelope uh, with the question, uh, questionnaire uh, for uh, Zelensky team to answer, uh, to apply uh, to be a member of the European Union. Uh, she said, as we heard uh, a few minutes ago, that usually it takes years to conclude this process, but she believes that uh, it, it can be, it can be uh, done in a uh, couple of a couple of weeks a couple of months and she promised that um, uh, the her team will be will be available seven days per week 24 hours per day uh, to help the ukrainian authorities uh, to fill all the questionnaire 
and Zelensky. It was also an important moment in, the, in that press conference, uh, said that uh, it's, gonna no, uh, it's not going to take a long time. Next week, uh, Ursula von der Leyen will have uh, all the envelope, all the questions uh, answered, and he wants to make, to make Ukraine part of the European Union. The European Union has imposed a fifth round of sanctions against Russia, including an embargo on the country's coal. The bloc currently imports around 10 million euros worth of coal from Russia every day. Pedro Sacadura brings us more. The EU is finally striking Russia's energy revenues. From August, the bloc is stopping its coal imports for good. An embargo will come into force as part of a fifth round of sanctions, fueled by war atrocities in Ukraine, and just given the green light. If anything, the effort is symbolic, with oil and gas being the real deal. Experts say Amit calls to break taboos. This coal ban is not gonna eat Putin much. Europe pays every day around 10 million euros for the coal it gets from Russia, but on the other end, it pays 850 million euros every day for the oil and gas it gets from Russia. So it is crystal clear that in order to have an impact, a real impact, Europe needs to talk oil and gas sanctions as of now. That's where we need to eat Putin. That's where his uh, uh, economic interests are. A full asset freeze of four Russian banks is part of the fresh round of sanctions as well. Ships flying the Russian flag won't be able to enter European ports. And like Russia and Belarus, registered trucks will only be allowed to operate in the bloc if carrying food, humanitarian aid, medicines and energy. A sector Ukraine considers critical to curb Putin's drive for war. This is a really uh, good signal that the pressure on Russia is increasing and continues to, 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 to increase. Of course, uh, our a request to, to our partners, especially in Europe, is very clear. We want to have, um, uh, we want to cut the sources for financing the war by Russia. And Russia receives about one third of their public revenues and budgets from exporting oil. So that's why we are so keen on uh, oil embargo. EU governments agreed to start working on a sixth round of sanctions, this time to include oil imports with Germany and Austria initially opposing the idea, although there are signs of Berlin's growing acceptance. Hungary, though, is openly against. Pedro Sacadura, Euronews, Brussels.